This is a quick tutorial showing the fundamental differences between third octave analysis and FFT analysis. Uh, it's not particularly exhaustive or mathematical, but it gives you an idea of the differences between the two and how it can often be very difficult to convert FFT spectra into valid third octave spectra. So let's start off with the system. This is basically a, an Apollo unit with one microphone plugged in. And we're going to be measuring up to 20 kilohertz and setting up an analysis uh, in third octaves and FFT at the same time. So let's have a look at the setup. And under the analysis here, uh, we can see that uh, we have third octaves enabled. We're going to use a bandwidth from 20 hertz to 20K. Um, for now uh, and then we'll see how we get on with that and we'll use a fast time constant uh, with a spectrum being created every 120 milliseconds. Uh, for the FFT analysis uh, again we're going to be using a 20 kilohertz bandwidth but now the way the spectrum is defined is slightly different. Uh, we divide that 20 kilohertz into 801 lines uh, so basically that gives us the resolution and you can see that we can change the resolution uh, to higher or lower values depending upon how much information we want. Let's start with 801 uh, and then we can uh, look at different resolutions later. Notice that the 1 uh, is normally a DC component um, but we are going to be using Hanning time window. Uh, again don't worry too much about that. Uh, but just bear in mind that if we use an overlap of at least 75%, then we are effectively uh, getting real-time analysis. Again, we can apply fast time constant uh, to those averages, and again, we'll put in 120 millisecond uh, time resolution. So here we have very basic um, analysis parameters uh, simultaneously so that we can compare the two. So we'll make a new measurement setup here. Uh, I'll just do a standard measurement uh, and run it continuously so that we can sort of see what's happening. Um, and if we now go to the measure window, you'll see that we've got a split screen here. The top one is third octaves uh, from a range 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And the FFT uh, is uh, narrowband 801 lines from 0 hertz again up to 20 kilohertz. So if we start the analysis we should be able to see a live uh, comparison between the two types of spectra. So let's do that. And you can see now the third octaves is uh, what we're familiar with, uh, basically a set of uh, filters. And in fact it's important to realize that third octave analysis is a time domain analysis where basically a set of filters uh, analyzes the incoming time signal and detects it in the normal way, just like a sound level meter, but it's filtered, uh, to give us the RMS value, which we then time weight with a fast time constant. So it's a continuous process. And you can see as I'm talking, uh, there's various frequencies right the way up to at least 10 kilohertz uh, and beyond. Now the first thing to note is that the frequency axis here is logarithmic. So if we just maximize that, you can see from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. But you'll notice that the top half of the bandwidth is really just these top three or four filters from 10 kilohertz up to 20 kilohertz. Whereas at the bottom end of the range, I have 20, the range 20 to 50 hertz, which is only a 30 hertz uh, difference. Uh, has actually got four or five filters down here. And that's why third octave analysis looks like all of the filters are the same width, because they are on a, uh, a logarithmic frequency axis. If I were to look at those filters on a linear frequency axis, so let's just change that, and on the x-axis we can change it to linear. We'll actually see what third octave analysis is really doing. You'll notice that there's loads and loads of filters down at low frequencies here and then as we go up in frequency the bandwidth gets wider and wider and wider. So we actually have very poor resolution at high frequencies 
and extremely good resolution <coughs> at low frequencies. But so clearly that's a, an unnatural way of uh, displaying third octaves values. Um, the bandwidth of the filter is one third of an octave uh, at the center frequency. So typically 23% of the center frequency. So at 10 kilohertz, the bandwidth of that filter is actually 230 hertz. So if I take my cursor now, which is currently set to 10 kilohertz up here, and I step it just one step, the filter now changes to the 12.5 kilohertz frequency band. So I'm stepping up here in 2500 hertz steps. Whereas at the bottom end, if I go down here and put my cursor say at 200 hertz, my cursor is now stepping at 40 hertz steps, 40 to 50 hertz. And they are the standard third octave center frequencies that we should be familiar with. Now the important thing to remember about third octaves is that they are standardized. So all third octaves uh, should be the same according to the old ISO 1260 series of standards. Um, so we can be sure that uh, assuming our uh, instrumentation is meeting the standards, then one third octave spectrum should be the same as any other third octave spectrum. Conversely, if we look at the FFT now, the FFT is a series of lines. Um, sometimes we draw it in a different way, just as such as a continuous curve. But in fact, they are just separate lines. Uh, and if you remember, we uh, define the number of lines in the FFT setup. And in this case, it's 800, 801 lines. So if I move my cursor now, at the moment it's set to 550 hertz. If I move the cursor now, by activating it. The cursor now moves in 25 hertz steps. Regardless of where I am in frequency, if I go right the way up to 15 kilohertz, it still steps in 25 hertz steps. Where does that 25 hertz comes from? It's 20 kilohertz divided by 800. So the number of lines tells us how much resolution we've got. Now, because it is a, a linear step, 25 hertz at a time, we normally display this data on a linear x-axis. So you can see that everything, so from 10 kilohertz up to 20k is the same distance as 0 to 10k. Um, so this is normally how we display uh, FFT data. Just out of interest, let's change the x-axis to um, a logarithmic axis and see what the spectrum looks like as if we were looking at third octaves. So now these two spectra are displayed on the same x-axis and you can see that at the high frequencies we have fantastic resolution. You can see 25 hertz resolution at 10 kilohertz, that's great. But at low frequency we have very poor resolution. So at 100 hertz I only have 25 hertz resolution. Whereas in third octaves I actually have 20 hertz resolution. So similar level, but if I go down to the bottom end, so now if I put my cursor down to uh, 25 hertz, at 25 hertz on my third octave spectrum, I have five hertz resolution, five or six hertz resolution. Whereas here on my FFT, I still have 25 hertz resolution. So I have very poor resolution at low frequencies. Okay, so that's a fundamental difference between FFT and third octaves. Now what a lot of people do is they think that they can take this FFT spectrum down here and convert it into a third octave. Well, you, you can do that, but you have to bear in mind that because you've got two fundamental different ways of, an, of analyzing, um, we have to bear in mind the resolution that we've got. So let's say we want to create our third octaves out of FFT. Well, first of all, let's take this graph here and we will put an additional spectrum on, and this time we'll show the third octave. 
and we'll give it a different color uh, so that we can see what we're doing and I'll display that just as contours so we're going to overlay third octaves uh, onto the FFT spectrum so let's see what that looks like and you can see now I've got the same spectrum here uh, but now superimposed on the FFT the first thing that you'll notice is that you've got higher levels at high frequencies and lower levels at low frequencies for the third octaves. That's all to do with bandwidth. At high frequencies, the bandwidth of the third octaves is wider. Therefore, the same energy while I'm talking is being split between fewer filters than the FFT spectrum. So the levels are gonna be higher. It's basically summing together all the energy from the FFT and giving me a number which is higher. Similarly, at low frequencies, I've got more resolution in the third octave spectrum, so the levels are lower. Now, this only implies for normal signals. If I have uh, tonal signals, this may not apply. It depends on whether the, um, the signal is broadband or tonal. And let's give an example of a tonal signal which of course could be a calibrator so I'll stick a calibrator on the microphone and you'll see now that I've got a pure tone signal and now in fact you can see that the third octave and the FFT are the same level so we have to be very careful about what sort of signals we're dealing with now let's say I want to do some sums and I want to take the FFT spectrum uh, and calculate the third octaves. How do we do that? Well, it's essentially quite simple. We have to take all of the third, all of the FFT bands within that third octave bandwidth down here and then calculate the overall level. So it's probably quite simple at high frequencies because I've got lots of lines. What do we do at low frequencies? Well, the problem here, of course, is that we don't have enough FFT resolution to get the correct third octave values. A rule of thumb is that we need three and a half to four FFT lines to be able to make up, or we use the word synthesize, a third octave band. So the process is called synthesis. So we basically have a rule here that says, if I want to synthesize a third octave spectrum from an FFT spectrum, I need to be careful about low frequencies. High frequencies tends not to be too much of a problem, but the moment I go to low frequencies, it can be a real problem. Now, one way around this is to change the FFT analysis so that I've got more lines at low frequencies. So let's stop the analysis now, and we'll go back to our analysis setup. We'll go to the FFT setup, and instead of 800 lines, let's take 6,400 lines, just nominal. So let's do that. And now you can see I've got lots more lines at low frequencies. Um, I'm actually displaying this data down to three hertz, but if we take the uh, 20 hertz third octave band, you can see that I've now got two th FFT lines in that third octave band, so I still can't really do it uh, accurately. Maybe I can do it accurately at uh, 30 hertz. I've got three third octave bands there that I can synthesize. Still not strictly speaking enough. So even with 6,400 lines up to 20 kilohertz, I still can't really synthesize the 63 hertz band properly. Well, you could take this to a logical conclusion and say, well, let's take even more lines. And this obviously requires more CPU power uh, to do the calculation. You won't have this kind of resolution on a portable device, typically. Um, and now it's giving me a warning to say that the exponential averaging, remember I said fast, uh, must be greater or equal to 160 milliseconds. So now because the FFT is taking a much uh, larger time chunk to calculate its spectrum, 
I'm running into difficulties with time averaging. So it's not going to let me do that. So now I have to use a longer time average. So let's take slow. And so immediately I've got an incompatibility between everything. And now you can see that I've got lots of lines at my 20 hertz third octave band. So probably I could take this spectrum, this FFT spectrum, and synthesize third octaves pretty accurately. But I have to say that if I do that, I need to be sure that my signal is fairly stationary and not changing with time. Because what you'll notice with this FFT spectrum is that it's gone all jumpy. That's the block arithmetic that the FFT is doing. It can't uh, calculate more than one spectrum, say, every 200 milliseconds, simply because it's got to wait for the time buffer to fill up. So it goes all blocky and steppy. And this is with a fast system using a DSP on the uh, Apollo box. Um, it's unlikely you'll be able to do this sensibly on a handheld device. And you can see that the third octave spectra, even though I'm talking, responds in a completely different way because it's time-based analysis. So it's always real time. It's always giving me the correct results. And therefore, if I've got a signal that varies a lot with time, for example, as I'm talking, it will gather all of the data. Whereas the FFT has gone horribly blocky. So these are things that you have to bear in mind when you want to synthesize third octaves from FFT data. If you're careful, the results can be very good, but there is no standard, no international standard, that tells you how to do the FFT synthesis. Everyone does it differently, and it will depend upon uh, the sample rate, the bandwidth, the number of lines, the averaging, uh, the overlap ratio, uh, the time window, and so on. Whereas third octaves are always third octaves. And you can be sure that if I take my data and compare it to anything else, then they will be uh, standardized. So that's really it. Uh, that hopefully gives you a quick overview on the differences between the two. Uh, it can get horribly mathematical and in-depth uh, if you really want to know more. Uh, but uh, that probably covers it for this particular demo. If you'd like any more advice, by all means contact us at axoft.co.uk um, where we'll be pleased to answer any questions and if uh, an analysis system such as Apollo and Samurai is of interest then we'll be happy to talk to you.